All right. I might possibly be, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is not a party. Whoa. <laughs> All right, what's up guys? Welcome to a super dark side of the road in the mountains moonlit episode. So I had plans for tonight, but uh, as things go, plans change. And I'm still going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to do a phone challenge. I want to do some astrophotography. Originally what I wanted to do is I wanted to do astrophotography with the moment 14 millimeters super wide. And there's a spot right up the road. We're at about 9,000 feet in the mountains in the Gila National Forest. There's a canyon right up here behind me. And I want, there's a, a certain spot in the road where it's lined up to the south which is where the Milky Way is going to be. And I have this whole shot planned out. Haven't executed it yet. We're going to get there. But I pulled over on the side of the road because uh, the moon is still up and I have some potential for another shot that I really want to try. So we're going to give that a go first. And I thought I would take you guys along with me so you can see how chaotically disorganized I am. So I'm going to walk you guys through what I'm doing. And to do that, let me uh, not forget to turn on my screen recorder for you guys. So that's showing me where the Milky Way is. So the Milky Way is right in front of me and it is slowly heading more vertical and more to the south, which is what we want. So it's 11 o'clock at night and the shot that I want is gonna take place at about 12.20. So another hour and 20 minutes. So that's why we have some piddling time. So anyways, all of this, what are we gonna do? There are some nice mountains right here that you can't see. The moon is right there. It's about half lit, uh, half, half yeah. fullness. <laughs> and that is enough to bring out the landscape a little bit. And it's enough to not completely drown out the Milky Way. However, it is drowning the Milky Way out a little bit. So how am I gonna combat that and still get a decent exposure of the land with the moonlight and deal with the moon drowning out the Milky Way. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a circular polarizer because the moon is here and the Milky Way is here. So if you see my hands, that's about a 90 degree angle, which is perfect for a circular polarizer. So I've already made a video about this before. So if you guys follow my channel and you've seen that video about uh, how to shoot the Milky Way in moonlight, then uh, this is gonna be very similar to that. However, this is a phone challenge. So I'd like to see if I can do it on a phone. Like I said, I was going to use the Moment 14 millimeter, but uh, I just did a huge video uh, that I just put out, was it today, huh? Today, yeah, today, uh, where, well, today now, I don't know when you guys are watching it, but I did the complete guide to Moment filters. And uh, that video, I mentioned that uh, you can't put filters on the Moment 14 millimeter. So I'm gonna have to switch it to my Moment 18 millimeter so that I can put my 62 millimeter adapter mount and then I can put my 82 millimeter adapter on top of that and have a ridiculously ridiculous contraption for a ginormous DSLR filter on my phone all so that I can get the Milky Way and the moonlight. So the, there is an easier way to do this and if you watch that video, you you probably know, uh, you can get, Moment has the 37 millimeter filters, which are super small and they work very nicely with the case so where you don't have to use the Moment lenses. You can just use the regular lenses on your phone and it looks like this. However, uh, I do not have the circular polarizer in this size, this 37 millimeter. I only have the ND filter. That's what I was digging for when I was starting this thing. So all of that to say that I'm going to be using my ginormous 82 millimeter Polar Pro circular polarizer. This is my favorite, the Polar Pros are definitely my favorite filters uh, by far. This is in no way sponsored uh, by any company whatsoever. This is just the stuff that I'm using. And I want to show you guys how and if and how I can get this shot. Okay, that's what I needed. I needed my 62 to 82 millimeter adapter, and then I need my 18 millimeter wide grommet. That's a lot of stuff going on here. Grommet, 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 grommet. 
All right, got the grommet. We're gonna put that on here. Sorry, no B-roll tonight. It's dark and I'm just not feeling it. It's gonna be like more of a one take kind of style. So it's not gonna be one take. <laughs> All right, 62 millimeter to 82 millimeter on the moment wide. Now the ginormous 82 millimeter. On the 62 millimeter, on the 18 millimeter. This is a lot of math. It's too late to be mathing. All right, camera lady told me I should show you guys what this looks like. So there it is. There's my ginormous monster lens. And my tripod just broke even more. How is that possible? Well, it's possible because I'm really rough on my gear. That's how it's possible. Look at this. <laughs> my poor little broken leg that we zip tied together. All right, I'm going to get this set up and then I'll walk you guys through the shot. All right, so I'm all framed up here with the phone. I think we're going to go into pro mode. So settings are a little different. So I just took this shot on my DSLR, on my 1DX2 with my 24 millimeter, which is a little tighter than this. This is gonna be the 18 millimeter, but on the DSLRs, you can get away with shooting at a lot higher of an ISO and lower shutter speed because the moon is out right now. That is giving me a lot more ambient light, even though it doesn't look like it right now. To the camera, the longer you leave the shutter speed open, that does give you more ambient light. So with the DSLR or the mirrorless cameras, I'm able to get lower shutter speed. So this was with the circular polarizer at 15 seconds f2.8 at 3200 ISO. So I had the luxury of doing that with a bigger sensor, better lenses and all of that stuff. I don't have that option with the phone. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm still gonna do 30 seconds and I'm still gonna crank my ISO up and here comes a car. That is really surprising considering we're out in the middle of freaking nowhere and it's almost midnight. Interesting. All right, so I'm gonna take a couple shots and check my framing and check my uh, settings to see how that looks good. So at nighttime on the phone, you definitely can't trust the meter reading to see about the exposure because even if it says it's properly exposed at nighttime, you're gonna want it probably overexposed for what it would think is exposed. All right, so I gotta cover that light so that it doesn't get into my lens. It's flaring real bad. It's the downside of trying to film a YouTube video and do astrophotography at the same time. It doesn't really work, so now you're just listening to me talk in the dark. Might be strange. All right, so I got my settings pretty much dialed in. I'm going with 30 seconds and ISO 800. I'm probably gonna bump that up to 1600 here in a second and I'll show you why. Uh, manual focus, so the manual focusing is tricky. I've talked about manually focusing for the stars with the phone before. Don't just automatically go to the infinity or the little mountain sign. If I click on it here, you'll see that I am about four ticks down below the mountain sign and I have discovered that that is kind of my happiness for the stars to be in focus and you would think the infinity would be it but it's it's not always the case and that's how it is with a lot of different lenses even on the bigger cameras and stuff you have to find that sweet spot so manual focus that's where I'm at uh, white balance I'm leaving an auto white balance because I find the phone just deals with it better and I can change that in post if I need to so those are my settings and here is what we're looking at. That Milky Way is really uh, faint because of the moonlight and it's even more faint because of the sensor restrictions and the lens restrictions from the phone compared to my DSLR. I'm gonna try to fix that with this though. So what I need to do is I'm just gonna hold this up and I, I kind of look like a dork here, but. Uh, I can faintly see through this to see where the cross polarization is and I just know that it's about right there. That saves me a little time from just like rotating it, taking a picture, rotating it, taking a picture. So I'm gonna, 
if you're doing this with circular polarizers, you should also know that anytime you use a circular polarizer, that's going to take about a stop to a stop and a half of light out, which is why I am now going to have to up my ISO and I'm going to go ahead and up it to 1600. I don't like to push the phone ISOs that high because the little tiny sensors, they are noisy, but I'm going to do it anyways. Sorry, I had to cut the light there. I'm taking the pic picture and I totally spaced it. <laughs> okay, so you're noticing some weird stuff here right off the bat. First of all, you're going to see that ginormous vignette and that is from the filters. So that's happening because the filters and the adapters are making the filter farther away from the lens and the, because it's a wide angle lens, it's seeing that vignetting even more. So the other thing you're going to notice is some wonky coloration there. So this is without the filter and then this is with the filter. And you'll also notice the ISO is much more harsh. So I'm going to try one more shot. All right, I don't I'm not really too happy about that. So if you guys uh, if you follow my channel, then you probably know that I've done the can you shoot the Milky Way with the S20 or shooting the Milky Way with the S20 and uh, I have the S20 Ultra but I think it's pretty much the same with the S20 and the S20 Plus I suspect I don't know for sure I get a lot of comments but I haven't had those other two phones I don't have those other two phones so I have uh, but you can definitely shoot the Milky Way with the phone but like I said it's being washed out because of the moon the moon is going to go down though in about an hour or two uh, at 1:20 a.m. this morning, the, Mil the Milky Way—I mean, the, the moon will go down, and once that does, I'll be able to get brighter shots with the phone. This is also, I think, being uh, skewed a little bit because I have all of this extra stuff. So what I'm actually going to do is let's take all of this stuff off. We're going to take the moment lens off, take the filter off, and I'm going to take another shot with just the straight-up regular phone lens and we'll compare it to see uh, what the quality is doing. So that's looking nicer. Uh, what I'm gonna do here, Brittany, you take that for a second. I don't know where the cap is. There's the cap. So now what I'm gonna do, since I like this framing and you can see Jupiter and Venus in there too. I think that's Venus. Uh, looking really cool and the mountain and everything and we got a lot of light on that mountain. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hold the lens or hold the polarizer over and uh, see if I can hold it still for 30 seconds and see if that makes a difference. So I just kind of wanted to bring you guys along to test all this stuff out and I, I just think maybe it might help give you some ideas about what's going on if I uh, if you see it in the field and see me like not everything is perfect with pro photographers. Just because we know what we're doing and we know how to use cameras and stuff like that doesn't mean that everything works out all of the time. And sometimes I think it's good uh, for people to see that. All right, there's the darkest. So now the trick is gonna be holding it nice and still and getting it right over that lens. And then also not Oh shoot, yeah, dim that, Brittany. And then also not shaking the camera because I technically have to touch the phone for this. I don't know how steady I can be. We're gonna find out. All right. So that's a noticeable difference, I think. Just looking back on here, I'm gonna have to edit these, obviously. But just from looking, this is the so this is the raw file, and then that's the compressed JPEG, so you can see all the noise they added and the desaturation and stuff. Uh, but if I'm scrolling through here, this is the one with the filter. So now I'll take a look at, this is the one without the circular polarizer, and you'll notice the Milky Way is a lot less defined. And there is with the filter again on full polarization. It's darker because again, we're losing a stop and a half of light, but it's more defined than that. I want to go ahead and get to the canyon and get set up and see if I can pull the rest of this 
uh, shot off that I had in mind as the moon goes down. But I want to get into the canyon before the moon goes completely down because I want that light to light up the canyon a little bit. So I will see you in just a second. All right, so I made it to the canyon. There is quite a bit of an echo, so hopefully that doesn't mess with my audio too much. Uh, it's really unfortunate that you can't see the canyon. However, you will see it in the photos. So what I did was I went ahead and got the shot in the in the road and even though it's like midnight and we're like an hour away from the nearest town and we're 10,000 feet up in the mountains I still don't feel like just hanging out in the middle of the road just because you never know crazies fly through here uh, anyway so I got the shots so uh, what I'm gonna do now though is I'm gonna try the 14 and I'm gonna try the side of the road because what I've noticed is that the Milky Way is rising up, but it's also going that way a little bit. So it's not directly lined up how I had uh, wanted it to be or imagined it to be. So I think by shifting my perspective and just coming off the road to this little edge, there's like a 100 foot drop right there into a tiny little creek below. <laughs> but I think that shifting it this way is going to make for a good image because of the way the Milky Way is lining up with that. Uh, crest there with the with the cliff face. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw on I'm gonna try a couple different things I'm gonna try with the polarizer and without the polarizer uh, Well, I did that for the road and I'll show you those in a second But I'm gonna try the 14 millimeter over here and see with and without the 14 millimeter and we'll see which one we like better See I told you I just got off the road and now there's a car coming at midnight, 10,000 feet in the mountains, an hour away from town, creepy. Wow. I was literally, we were like standing out in the road doing shots and I was getting shots with my other camera, my DSLRs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, good call, good call. All right, so I got the 14 on there now. So I'll walk you guys through what I'm seeing. You're not gonna be able to see much on the screen, but you'll notice I've got it up to 1600 ISO and I maxed out at 30 seconds shutter, still locked down on the manual focus, still in auto for the white balance. And uh, Brittany, do you wanna get that light? We're gonna take the shot. I'm gonna leave the settings the same for the 14 and the, uh, in, the in phone lens, the, which is like a 26 millimeter equivalent. Okay, so there we are. That's with the 14, no filter. So the Milky Way is a little washed out. The moon is going down though. So as the moon goes down and gets more behind these canyons and mountains and stuff, the Milky Way is going to get brighter. But I'm, that means I'm also gonna lose my ambient light. I'm gonna have to up those exposures a lot. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of my loom cubes and I'm gonna light up this area, not that. That's the panel mini that I'm using right there to light me up but that's too much for this area. So I'm gonna use my little loom cube air and I'm just gonna light paint and just whoosh, right there. So Brittany, light. All right, well, here's my composition. So the light painting wasn't that great. I think I'm gonna shift the composition a little bit. I'm gonna bring it over that way. The Milky Way is more on this side and I'm getting more of this cliff. And then I'm gonna try more of an even paint uh, throughout the foreground with that. So. This kind of stuff is all just trial and error. All right, you ready, Brittany? All right, so that's a little bit better. Still not uh, super even for the lighting, especially down there because there's a giant drop. If you can see that a little bit, there's a creek down there, but I don't feel like doing any more actually. 
All right, so I'm also, I'm not going to try to do the polarizer again with the phone. I just, it's, since I don't have the right one, I don't like holding it over. It's just too much effort. I can't be bothered. <laughs> uh, I sound like a hipster. All right, so anyways, uh, if you, I'm going to wrap it up here because that's getting kind of long. Like I said, I didn't have too much expectations for this. I just wanted to take you guys along with me so you could really see an in the field process for my astrophotography and for astrophotography in general and for astrophotography with a phone since this was the phone challenge uh, and i hope that just kind of watching me mess around and figure things out and stuff like that helps you and hopefully you'll learn some stuff from that and at least hopefully you'll realize that uh, everything just doesn't go perfect all the time and that these type of shots take effort if you want this kind of shot you got to put in the effort so oh yeah the app that i was using before is called sun surveyor i don't know if i mentioned that earlier when i showed you the screenshot uh, but sun surveyor is great uh, photo pills does it too for both iphone and android uh, those are the two main ones i use i use sun surveyor the most though it really helps when you're trying to plan stuff like this and figure that out and then that and a combination of google maps and photographers ephemeris online on the computer uh, to be able to see the road and you know all that kind of stuff so like i said these shots they take effort and if you want them you got to put all of that stuff together you also have to be lucky enough to live or have access to a place like i do this area of new mexico that i'm in actually has the darkest skies in the country so i'm very lucky i get a lot of comments on my other milky way uh, s20 videos and stuff saying you know i tried the same settings but i couldn't get it didn't look like your shot and it's like well where do you live and then you know somebody comments well i live in tokyo or i live in indianapolis or i live in you know wherever and it's like if you live in light pollution areas you're not going to see the milky way there's like five people that live in my entire state and none of them are here you know and i'm ten thousand feet up and i have access to this milky way so keep that in mind when i'm shooting on these phones and i'm showing you that they can do the milky way yeah they can but maybe not in your area and maybe not in your time of maybe not in the right time of year or whatever you also have to wait you know for the summertime in the northern hemisphere and and all that stuff and i am rambling and i think we're done here but hopefully that gives you some more valuable information into what it takes to do astrophotography and what it takes to do astrophotography with a phone so if you have any questions about what I did or anything concerning the moment lenses or the settings for pro mode or anything like that, the Milky Way, the programs, leave those in the comments below and you know I'll definitely answer them. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I've got new videos every week. Hit that like button if this video helped you out or if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. I have a long way down. No guardrails.